Nitrogen is the most abundant element in the atmosphere at approximately 78%. It is an element transferred and exchanged continuously between living and non-living things, building block of the DNA and RNA of all living organisms, and it generates the living processes through a sufficient supply. Too much and insufficient nitrogen has also consequences for the environment. It does play a very important role in the biosphere to execute its very function. It has a system. Nitrogen gas is unusable for most plants and animals, despite that there are few types of microorganisms that work with plants to transform atmospheric nitrogen into forms that can be used by most of life. These forms of nitrogen include ammonium, which can subsequently be converted into organic nitrogen or nitrate and used by the ecosystem. This graphic model illustrates the interactions between the different elements that contribute to the nitrogen cycle, their effects, and their relevance to the system. There are three main parts of the system shown in the illustration. Number one is nitrogen fixation. Number two is nitrification. And number three is the nitrification. In the means of subsystems of nitrogen cycle affecting each other, it does in a contributory manner of physical, chemical, and biological steps and works systematically in order to acquire its main function, to build vital macromolecules of life, the proteins and nucleic acids. To understand the subsystems involved in the cycle that make it possible, a closer look at the elements is necessary. Let us begin with the atmospheric nitrogen. The gas itself is unusable for most biochemical processes of organisms. According to Dr. Harrison in his article for Vision Learning, for dinitrogen to be converted into its viable forms, it has to undergo nitrogen fixation. For nitrogen fixation through high-energy phenomena like lightning, Energy from lightning causes nitrogen and water to combine and create ammonia and nitrates. These two are then transported to the ground by precipitation where plants can absorb them. Another method of nitrogen fixation is carried out by nitrogen-fixing bacteria, those that are present in the soil and in root nodules of some plants. Through precipitation, atmospheric nitrogen is deposited into the soil where nitrogen-fixing organisms convert dinitrogen into reactive nitrogen. This will be utilized by plants as nutrients and will then be digested by consumers within the ecosystem as part of the food web. When plants and animals die or excrete dung, they become food for the composers and are broken down into ammonia by these same organisms. The ammonia will then undergo the same process of nitrification and denitrification and return to the atmosphere. Bernard in 2010 defined nitrification as the process that converts ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. Most nitrification occurs aerobically and is carried out exclusively by prokaryotes. There are two distinct steps of nitrification that are carried out by distinct types of microorganisms. Additionally, nitrate is introduced into the soil through human activities such as the use of fertilizers. It contributes to the nitrogen cycle through the absorption of nitrate present in the fertilizer into the ground. The oxidized form of nitrogen within the soil will then undergo the nitrification which will convert the oxidized form of nitrogen into dinitrogen and nitrous oxide gas which will then go back to the atmosphere. Another byproduct of the excrement and carcasses of plants and animals is fossil fuels. Dead plants and animals are converted into fossil fuels through natural processes taking place for many years. Nitrogen present in fossil fuels enters the atmosphere again through the emission of gas from volcanic eruptions or through industrial combustion and gasoline engines. As discussed, the nitrogen cycle's core importance is the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen gas to viable forms or chemicals for the biochemical processes of plants and animals. Numerous natural ecosystem processes are constrained by the amount of available nitrogen. Thus, as a limiting nutrient, nitrogen will increase the development and production of plants. We may be unable to alter the nitrogen cycle or fix nitrogen biologically, but we certainly do industrially through the combustion of fossil fuels and the use of fertilizers. These processes raise atmospheric concentration of substances containing nitrogen. Other than nitrogen gas, high quantities of atmospheric nitrogen are linked to adverse outcomes, such as the creation of acid rain and greenhouse gas emissions. Also, since nitrogen is a limiting nutrient, artificial fertilizers containing nitrogen became popular and are used in agriculture that may be washed through surfaces, running off into lakes, rivers, and streams. This runoff can cause a significant effect called saltwater and freshwater eutrophication, which causes the overgrowth of algae and other microorganisms. Despite these overwhelming causes and effects on the relationship of each part of the process, it persists in various circumstances regardless of the effect of combined parts 
or the individually evaluated parts.